What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the spot where we kick back and react to all kinds of different things. Alright, so what we got going on today? <clears throat> We're about to get into another animal video. Our boy from Casual Geographics has dropped a new one. So about to check this one out. This one's called The Curious Case of the Capybara. So we're, it looks like we're headed for another wholesome video here. From what it looks like. So he's been on a... This, this is kind of like, you know, making me nervous now. He's been on a roll with these wholesome videos. And I feel like that's just him slowly setting us up to traumatize us with something eventually. Because I know how he gets down with the... <laughs> I, know, I know he built his channel off of... He didn't build his channel off of wholesomeness. <laughs> But I'm always here for it because it's always informative, educational, hilarious. So let's go ahead and check this one out. But before we do, if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, what are you waiting for? It costs you nothing. And it keeps you up on all the new videos that get dropped on this channel. Not to mention it gets us one step closer to our goal for the year, trying to get to 3,500 subs. So if you have not subscribed yet, remember it is absolutely free. So go ahead and hit that button and become an official supporter. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into this. Casual Geographics with the curious case of the Capybara. Let's go. Hold on, I made this joke already. How you doing? Was he surfing on him? I hope you have a good day. I hope you have a better week. I hope your month is full of successful days and a lot of great ventures. I hope you just come up, brother. You smell great. You smell great. Wow. Oh, the Capybara one of the most memeable animals to be added to Earth's roster, almost entirely for their sheer positivity. And it's not like that fake positivity from animals like dolphins or performative activists on TikTok. <laughs> Capybaras are legitimately unproblematic, almost too much for their own good. The thing is, they have no reason to be like this. In fact, they have every excuse to be the exact 180. But first, let's talk about what this aquatic stress ball is. It's a rodent, and pretty much a plus size guinea pig since that's their closest relative, even though they're like 60 times heavier. Also, guinea pigs are one of the few mammals that can get folded by deep water since they can't swim, which is something cappies know nothing about since half their personality stays in the water with them. Just like their cousins the Nutria, which is basically just a beaver you've never heard of, and the Pacarana, who's probably most famous for getting abused with soap like a banned Old Spice ad. But out of all rodents, capybara are wow. the heaviest and the ones closest to the weight class of a grown man. <laughs> Bad Old Spice ad, wow. <laughs> I, I never understood this video, like, in order for him to even have do that, like, who puts soap on them? That's, that's just mean. Spice ad. But out of all rodents, capybara are the heaviest and the ones closest to the weight class of a grown man. And considering how people feel about their cousins a hundred times smaller, you would think the capybara would be the most hated oxygen sink on the planet. But the only thing more ironic than the fact that it's the complete opposite is the fact that this chunky chinchilla is so chill since history shows they should really be the polar opposite. Usually when something's this unbothered, it's because they've never felt any kind of pressure from predators. It's why the quokkas on Rottnest Island have no fear of humans since they have no natural predators. Capybara, on the other hand, have more ops than a rapper with a Rico charge. These giga gerbils have to avoid being discharged from the population by the biggest big Big cat in North America, a discount store brand crocodile, and a paraplegic Jurassic understudy. Their childhood isn't any easier, cause juveniles can get caught- Did he just say a paraplegic Jurassic understudy? Where does he come up with these jokes? Oh. <laughs> up with ocelots, a paralysis demon with wings, and technically pelicans don't count, but it's not for a lack of trying. And normally an animal that has to share an area code with this many threats to its way of life compensates by becoming a problem itself. For example, if zebras had a strike for everything with the ability to bury them, they wouldn't have a single pixel of pale on them. And we all know those TV static stallions ride that excuse like they get tax breaks from it. It just makes more sense for a prey animal to be more willing to throw down. Predators get active to eat. Prey animals fight to live. But what doesn't make sense is a cat Capybara doing the mannequin challenge seven years late when there's a homicidal vice grip out looking for calories. It's kind of like honey badgers and capybaras are two ends of the nihilism spectrum. You got the four-legged assault Oreo who doesn't value anyone's life, not even its own. And then there's a hippo hamster who can't be physically bothered enough to care. And you would think this mentality would have gotten a cappy written out of the series of life by evolution. Or maybe they have the opposite of the kangaroo situation. The kangaroo situation is that kangaroos used to have to deal with some of the most cartoonishly absurd predators the world had ever seen. Stuff like a 23-foot Komodo dragon, or the marsupial lion Thylacleo. 
That prehistoric PTSD means that even though kangaroos today have to deal with zero apex land predators, they still act like they're in the trenches. So it's possible capybaras had few natural predators coming up, and now they're Helen Keller to all forms of conflict. Believe it or not, capybaras weren't always the brolic beavers we know them as. Their ancestors were actually small rodents that evolved from Africa about 80 million years ago. Being small was lit because one, it's a whole lot easier to hide, and number two, eventually you get so small that putting you on a plane isn't worth the energy it would take to catch you. And when their ancestors pulled up to South America 40 million years later, Later, they showed up to an area with few natural predators and plenty of food in the forms of the grasses they like to eat. Scientists now say that it was the lack of predatory pressure that allowed this plus size rabbit pig to grow to the size it is today. That and apparently capybaras have a special form of insulin that's actually better at getting cells to divide and grow. In non-AP biology terms, because I never took that class, this meant that capys were able to exceed their weight limits without also increasing their chances of getting clapped by cancer. But of course, nature always catches up and it wasn't like the capybara- Freaking cheating. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, I can get bigger, but it ain't gonna stress my body out. It ain't gonna kill me. Cheating. <laughs> was tanky enough to disregard danger like manatees are. And in a messed up Uno reverse, becoming a literal mighty mouse meant the capybara was now much more attractive to predators than it would have been if it would have stayed the same size pre-bulk. So it's pretty much like capys today have to pay for how good their ancestors had it. Like Gen Z. It's also possible that the capybara <laughs> isn't as easygoing as memes wants you to think it is. They live in groups, and each group has a dominant alpha male who gets the most food and female <laughs> validation. Which can lead to a lot of infighting in the capy clan. And no matter how hard the alpha male tries to flex, there's always going to be a few subordinates that get it in behind his back with his women. So even though the dominant alpha male lays more pipe than any single subordinate, a majority of the plumbing actually comes from the subordinates as a whole. The females also get a say in the matter too. Mostly because if a female ain't feeling a certain male, she dubs him by nose diving into the nearest body of water, where she can hold her breath for up to five minutes. There's actually a lot of drama in the cabbie community if you pay attention long enough. It's definitely not like bonobos, who seem to have all social structure figured out, albeit for R-rated, definitely not safe for work reasons. That still doesn't explain why cabbie bars are so chill around animals not even in the same species. Like Take Cheesecake, for example. Cheesecake was a capybara who was rescued and sent to live in a refuge for neglected and abused animals. But since she was only a baby at the time, she spent a lot of time living with the sanctuary's founder alongside her many dogs. And in typical cappy fashion, Cheesecake became one of the dogs, eating, sleeping, playing, and pretty much doing everything else in between with them. Eventually, she would be promoted to the de facto foster mom for any abandoned puppies coming through the sanctuary. She would regularly adopt a family of abandoned puppies and raise them like her own blood. She would even discipline her pups if they ever got too out of line. Cheesecake was basically a mother Teresa for terriers and any other orphan pups. Those weren't the only animals she adopted in her time, but there's actually a really good reason why capybaras are the best rodents to leave your children with, and why they're the polar opposite of Chuck E. Cheese. Something wow. about that cheddar feed never really sat right with me. <laughs> Straight up freaking Five Nights at Freddy vibes every time I see Chuck E. Cheese now, watching too much Game Theory. <laughs> oh man, but capybaras, man. Hold up, let me get off of this. Capybaras do- There we go, that's better. <laughs> But yeah, man, that's crazy. I mean, not, not so much crazy, but it's always fascinating to see animals behaving like that, you know? You got a rodent, an overgrown rodent, who literally is, ra is raising rescue pups. Like, wow, that's, that's fascinating. So the best rodents to leave your children with, and why they're the polar opposite of Chuck E. Cheese. Something about that cheddar feed never really sat right with me. Capybaras <laughs> do this thing called alloparenting, where the adults take turns watching over the babies in a group in this kind of like revolving daycare system. They'll even go as far as nursing pups that aren't even theirs. Pray for bro on the left, he going through some stuff none of us can comprehend right now. The benefit <laughs> is that in a jungle full of EDP size <laughs> Yo, that's so true, like, what is he really looking at? He is really in deep thought right there. Oh man, if only you couldn't find out, right? If only. Right now. The benefit is that in a jungle full of EDP sized threats to minors, this actually increases the cappy pup's chances of actually surviving long enough to celebrate their birthday. But it also means that Cheesecake wasn't just a stepmother, she was the mother that stepped up. Also, I just want to say that the same sanctuary would end up getting another cappy bar named Cobbler, and now Cheesecake and Cobbler are homies, and I feel like we should just take some time to appreciate that. Another thing to appreciate <laughs> is that plenty of other animals like monkeys or painted dogs do the whole ala parenting thing, but cabbies are the only rodents that do it. Well, actually, technically not really. Turns out red squirrels will adopt orphans as long as they're somewhat closely enough related to them. But that's not the same as having a built-in nursery system in the group. So it seems that being naturally social, being as swole as they are, and having literal stepmother software in their system is what makes this He-Man hamster what it is. Capybara's got so much clout that even though they're truly native to South America, they have a pretty sizable fan base all over, but especially in Japan. Why Japan? Well, it all started in the Izu Shaboten Zoo in 1982. I'm not surprised. <clears throat> Japan likes to... 
overdo it with a lot of stuff. It's like, we love it. We're about to It all started in the lot. Izu Shabotin Zoo in 1982. A worker was cleaning out an enclosure with hot water when he turned around and realized that all the capybara were huddled around a warm puddle that had formed. The worker said bet, or whatever the equivalent in Japanese would be. And ever since, the Izu Shaboten Zoo would create these traditional hot yuzu baths for the water-loving hippo hamsters to enjoy. Which is the entire backstory as to how this video exists. And because whatever capybara received, they give back tenfold, these videos going viral single-handedly brought in thousands, hundreds of thousands, and even millions of yen in revenue, all from people wanting to see them. Meaning it is no scientifically proven, 100% non-refutable, that capybaras are good for the economy. If your country's- Not to mention, not to mention, if there's any place where you're going to capitalize on cuteness, it's Japan. Their kawaii culture is wild. So, yeah, they, they picked they, they, they pick the right spot for that. <laughs> Currently in a recession, think to the last time you saw a capybara hot tub party. If you can't remember, then... I think you found your problem. We don't need stimulus <laughs> checks. We need more happy cabbies per capita. That's why there are entire websites dedicated to finding the closest capybara in your area. So if I ever post a picture of me in a capybara with no context, this, this is the context. Capybaras are such an unlimited <laughs> serotonin hack that naturally people are gonna ask if they're good pets. And my answer is, yeah, they probably be good pets. Question is, would you be a good owner? Here's why you probably wouldn't. One is that they poop. A lot. lot. They kind of have the panda problem where they eat things that don't give them a whole lot. That's bad. the first thing. As soon as you thought said about that, that's the first thing that went through our mind. I've owned, and I think about it, I've owned plenty of like small rodents, hamsters and stuff. Mostly hamsters. I think I had. Did I ever have a mouse? No, but ma mainly hamsters. But then, then wasn't me, but a relative had a rat. But um, knowing how much those little ones poop in their cages at their size, I could only imagine. <laughs> how much cleanup you got to do with, with one of these so no not not that's not an ideal pet to me one is that they poop a lot they kind of have the panda problem where they eat things that don't give them a whole lot back so to compensate they eat a whole lot more of it which means they seem to drop deuces at will you might not get to notice just how much because capybara also take part in coprophagia which in nice 2023 youtube guidelines terms means to eat food twice to get all the nutrients out of it and if you can handle watching yeah. this infinite food glitch in action there's the fact that you have to feed them in the first place remember <laughs> we're talking about a gerbil that can weigh as much as you but you're not just feeding one cappy since they're social animals that don't do well alone you'd have to adopt a buddy for him or even another one after that. Cause two's company, but three's a party. And no self-respecting cappy would hop out at the after party with an entourage of one. All jokes aside, that same logic is why Switzerland considers a guinea pig a victim of abuse if it has to live alone. It's really- Yo, that is, I, I can get behind that. There's, there are like, like certain, ha like certain rodents, like um, hamsters, it depends. If you have a male, that you want to leave them alone because they're highly territorial. But if you have a, if you get a female, you want to get two females because they're more social. Pretty complex with them. But then there's like I think some other species is like no, not like that. But there are rodents who are very social, and yeah, they'll become depressed if they're they'll feel isolated if they have no one else to hang out with. So becoming a pet owner for some of these usually means becoming having multiple pets. Really not that different for a guinea pig. Guinea pig. I should have used that from the beginning. There's also the fact that since half their life involves water, you're gonna have to have 24 hour access to anything the capybara can at least wade in. And before you say bathtub, just remember that most of their backdoor business happens while they're in the water. So <laughs> you might wanna rethink that. But the best you reason why you, you might wanna hold off on adopting pool. a walking coconut. Right there, you gotta have a whole pool, not even your pool. You gotta have like a backyard with like a second pool dug out for them if you have a pool at all and everything. Not something for y'all, just something strictly for them cause you're not gonna wanna swim in all that, no. Nah. No. It's still a wild animal. Don't let the memes get it twisted. Despite all the hype, they're still very much capable of inflicting violence when they want to. Or when they feel like they need to. And I'ma just say, it's real cute until you get it mad and you realize you now have a 150 pound rodent with an overbite coming at you. In fact, in 2005, a capybara in a Japanese zoo murked a spider monkey that was standing in his pool by grabbing it by the neck. So if you're considering adopting a biting, pooping, eating machine, you might be better off just having kids because only one of them can give you tax credits. Or you can just move to Tigre, Argentina because the South American city has been taken over. And when I say taken over, I mean that in the most passive way possible. With fires and an unusually cold winter killing their food supply, the Capi clan seen the spawn en masse inside the Argentinian gated community. They quite literally pulled up. The upside, <laughs> free lawn control. 
The downside is these deer rabbits marrying the problems of the two animals in one package. They destroy gardens and leave behind Hershey kisses while also becoming a danger to everyone on the road. There have also been reports of capybara running fades with pet dogs. Although to be fair, the dogs probably started it. But there is another bright side if you want to look at it that way. The biggest threat to a capybara isn't a jaguar or a caiman. It's actually humans who have historically hunted them for their meat and for their hide to turn into leather. We're their biggest op by far, and if they decide to take back what's theirs, I'm not going to be mad at it. And the fact that they're doing it to a gated, rich community... I, there's a moral in there somewhere. But that's going to do it for this video. For more consistent yes, uploads, be sure to check out my TikTok and Instagram. I try to post daily on both. And if you'd like to support this channel beyond subscribing, also consider becoming a patron on Patreon. But like, only do it if you can afford it. Because honestly, you watching a video this far is actually more than I can really ask for. Got a whole lot of video ideas I want to get out for the new year. So as always, drink water, hug your mother, dap up your father if he's not into the whole hugging thing. Try to be a cappy in a world full of cappers. And I'm going to see y'all in the next one. All right. Olha lá, Lorenzo. Tem que pedir pro carro parar, pô. Eles vão parar. Blocking traffic. Ah, eu não tô acreditando nisso. I knew a bad idea. They gotta get across the street. about that was just wholesome to me <laughs> all right so yeah we got the we got the wholesome video so i'm expecting the next one to be something terrifying <laughs> and traumatic but um otherwise always great video from um casual geographics they always he always does great research great work putting these together so big ups and the jokes are always hilarious always all right y'all so that's it for that one so y'all know what to do Go down in the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about this one. Let me know if you'd like to see me react to next. Hit that like button before you go. Share this video with everyone you know. And subscribe if you haven't done so already. All right. So, till next time, take care of yourselves. And I'm out of here.